Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another enlightening episode of MedSynapse podcast series, your go-to podcast for insightful conversations in the world of healthcare. I'm Dr. Nigar, your host, and today we're joined by a remarkable guest, Dr. Faris Ali Shahada. Dr. Faris is not just a dedicated medical doctor, he's also a passionate soft skills trainer and a public health leader. With an impressive track record of training over 4,000 healthcare providers through more than 150 comprehensive programs, Dr. Faris is a driving force in soft skills development. Our focus today is on a topic crucial for healthcare professionals, stress management. Dr. Faris will share his wealth of experience and insights on recognizing and addressing stressors in a demanding field of healthcare. We will explore specific strategies for well-being, coping mechanisms, and the role of soft skills in stress resilience. Welcome, Dr. Faris. Good day, everyone. I would like to extend my sincere thanks to Dr. Nigar for this uh, kind invitation to participate in this enlightening podcast. It's uh, a great privilege for me to contribute my insights and experiences in soft skills within the medical field. And I am eager to engage in our conversation today. Thank you so much, Dr. Faris, for joining us on this important topic for today. Let's begin the podcast. Dr. Faris, to begin with, in a demanding field of healthcare, how can professionals effectively recognize and address stressors in their daily work? Thank you so much for asking me this great question. Yeah, for sure, healthcare professionals can effectively recognize stress by being mindful of physical, emotional, and behavioral signs. So regarding to physical signs, professionals feeling constantly tired, lacking energy, and experiencing physical exhaustion despite adequate rest. The second sign, frequent or persistent headaches, especially tension headaches, which may be exacerbated by stress. Also, tightness or stiffness in the muscles, especially in the neck, shoulders, and back due to stress-induced physical tension. The fourth, significant changes in eating habits, such as overeating or undereating, which can be linked to stress and emotional well-being. The last sign, difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep or experiencing restful sleep due to stress-related worries or physical tension. So this is about physical signs. Now regarding to the emotional signs, professionals feeling easily agitated, short-tempered, or having a reduced tolerance for stressors in the work environment. Also, experiencing resistance, worry, nervousness, or unease, which may interfere with daily tasks and decision-making. The third one, feeling down, low in spirits, or experiencing a sense of hopelessness, especially in response to work-related stressors. Sensation of being unable to cope with the demands of work leading to a sense of being inundated or overwhelmed. This is about emotional. Now, regarding to behavioral science, professionals may be using tobacco as a coping mechanism for stress, which can lead to further health issues. The second one, pulling away from colleagues, friends, or family members and avoiding social interactions due to stress-related feelings of isolation or disconnection. Also, a decline in work performance, efficiency, or quality of work due to stress-related distractions, fatigue, or lack of focus. It's so important to know these signs because if you are suffering from them, you should take action regarding these important issues. 
Dr. Faris, your insights into recognizing and addressing stressors in healthcare are truly valuable. It is evident that being proactive in identifying these challenges is key to maintaining a healthy work environment. Now, moving on to our next question, what specific strategies or coping mechanisms do you recommend for healthcare professionals to maintain their well-being and mental health? Thank you so much, Dr. Negar. Yeah, we have a lot of techniques and activities to proactive steps to address stress. For healthcare professionals, such as engaging in regular physical activity, maintaining a healthy diet, and ensuring adequate rest and relaxation are essential for managing stress and promoting overall well-being. Also, practicing mindfulness and meditation, also deep breathing exercise, maybe progressive muscle relaxation can help reduce stress and promote a sense of calm. The third one, establishing clear boundaries between work and personal life work-life balance, and learning to say no to additional responsibilities when feeling overwhelmed is crucial for maintaining a healthy work-life balance. Also, connecting with colleagues, mentors, or mental health professionals for emotional support, guidance, and advice can provide valuable assistance in managing stress. Fifth, prioritizing tasks setting realistic goals and organizing work schedule effectively can help healthcare professionals manage their workload and reduce stress the last one participating in training programs workshops or continuing education opportunities focused on stress management can provide valuable skills and resources for coping with workplace stress the last strategy, it's very, very important. It's regular self-assessment. Yeah, reflecting on personal stress levels, identifying triggers and monitoring well-being over time can help healthcare professionals stay proactive in managing stress. Dr. Faris, I really appreciate your recommendations on coping mechanisms for healthcare professionals. Prioritizing well-being and mental health is essential, and your practical strategies provide a great resource for our listeners. Now, moving on to our next question. From a public health perspective, how can healthcare organizations foster a supportive environment that promotes stress resilience among their staff? Nice question, and it's very important to decision makers in healthcare sector. So, from a public health perspective, Healthcare organizations can foster a supportive environment that promote stress resilience among their staff by implementing the following strategies. The first one, healthcare organizations can develop comprehensive wellness programs that offer resources, education, and support for stress management, mental health, and overall well-being. The second one, encouraging flexible work schedules, providing paid time off, and promoting a healthy work-life balance can help reduce stress and prevent burnout among healthcare professionals. Also, fostering an environment where staff feel comfortable discussing stress, seeking support, and sharing concerns can help reduce stigma and promote mental health awareness. Fifth, providing training and education on stress recognition, coping strategies, and resilience building techniques can equip staff with the tools to manage stress effectively. The last one, encouraging supportive leadership styles, promoting teamwork, and recognizing staff contributions can contribute to a positive work environment and stress resilience. By implementing these strategies, healthcare organizations can create a supportive environment that promotes stress flexibility among their staff, ultimately contributing to the well-being of healthcare professionals and the quality of care provided to patients. Dr. Faris, 
Are there specific soft skills that healthcare professionals should prioritize to enhance their ability to manage stress and maintain positive interactions with patients and colleagues? Yes, Dr. Negar. There are specific combinations of soft skills that healthcare professionals should prioritize to enhance their ability to manage stress and maintain positive interactions with patients and colleagues. These soft skills include, as we said in the last episode, empathy is the one of the most important skills in the healthcare sector. So what is empathy? It's the ability to understand and share the feelings of patients and colleagues, which can foster trust, rapport, and effective communication. The second skill, active listening. Engaging in attentive and non-judgmental listening to fully understand the concerns and needs of patients and colleagues, which can improve relationships and support. Also, communication skills. It's very important skill. It's clear and effective communication with patients and colleagues, including the ability to convey information in a compassionate and understandable manner. Also, emotional intelligence, recognizing and managing one's own emotions, as well as understanding and responding to the emotions of others, to navigate challenging situations with empathy and composure. Flexibility, flexibility to change, which can help healthcare professionals navigate unpredictable and high-pressure environments with resilience. Also, collaboration, working effectively as part of a team, following diverse perspectives and contributing to a positive and supportive work environment. The last one, conflict resolution, the ability to address and resolve conflicts constructively, which can reduce workplace tension and promote positive interaction. By applying these skills in your professional life, I am confident that you can enhance your life efficiency and will be more comfortable and free of stress. Dr. Faris, your emphasis on specific soft skills for stress management is truly intriguing. It's clear that developing these skills can enhance professional ability to navigate the stress and also maintain positive interactions in a demanding healthcare setting. Now, coming to our final question of the day, Dr. Faris, in your experience, what role does effective communication play in reducing stress among healthcare teams, and how can professionals enhance their communication skills for better stress management? Yeah, communication skills are the basic of life. Effective communication plays a crucial role in reducing stress among healthcare teams. When communication is clear and open, it can help prevent misunderstanding, reduce uncertainty, and promote a sense of unity. Also, shared purpose within the team. Professionals can enhance their communication skills for better stress management by the first one, practicing attentive and empathetic listening to understand colleagues' concerns and perspectives which can foster trust and support within the team. The second one, communicating information in a clear and straightforward manner to avoid confusion and minimize stress-inducing misunderstanding. Also, encouraging open communication, feedback, and the sharing of concerns within the team to address stressors and promote a supportive environment. The fourth, Developing the ability to address conflicts constructively and navigate a challenging conversation with professionalism and empathy. The last one, demonstrating empathy and understanding in interactions with colleagues, which can create a supportive and compassionate team dynamic. As we conclude this insightful episode of MedSynapse, I want to express my sincere gratitude to our esteemed guest, Dr. Faris Ali Shehada, 
Thank you so much, Dr. Faris, for sharing your wealth of knowledge on stress management in healthcare and offering valuable insights for our listeners today. Thank you so much, Dr. Negar. I want to express my gratitude to you for offering us this chance uh, to live into the crucial subject of stress management within medical field. And uh, thank you to all our listeners. Thank you for your attention and engagement. Thank you so much, Dr. Faris, once again. And we are definitely looking for many more podcasts together. And to our dedicated audience, thank you for tuning in. Your engagement is what makes MedSynapse a thriving platform for meaningful discussions. If you found today's episode informative, don't forget to subscribe, like, and stay updated with us for more engaging content. Stay connected, stay informed, and until next time, goodbye.